Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. In this second video on our series on paths, we're going to look at the more advanced features of dynamic paths and all of the options you've got available to you. So I'm pretty proud of this project. I spent a little bit of time creating it. And this is a way that we can actually take a look at and check out all of the properties of paths while creating them dynamically. So if I click around here, I can actually make my own path. And now I can alter each property of this path. So if I want it open, then I keep it as it is. But if I want it closed, I can press one. And you can see that it's now going to go back to there. If I want it straight, well, it already is. But if you want to curve it, you can do that. Now when you curve it, you want to then alter the precision. So at one, it's basically just a straight line. But as you increase precision, it becomes smoother and smoother all the way up to the max precision of eight. Relative means that when this runs, if it's relative, it's going to just start this NPC on the path right where it is. But if it's absolute like this, if I start it, it's going to start up here. And then we can control what the path does at the end of it. So if we want them to stop, which is the value we've got right now, then it's going to stop. And when this is done, we can go ahead and make another path. So I'll make this path straight. I'll make it relative. And I will make it so that he restarts the path. When I do this, he starts it right here, even though the path is now over here, which is kind of cool. And because it's just going to continue to restart indefinitely, I've set up a way that you can press escape to restart the game. But all of that out of the way now, let's actually look at the code I'm using to create this. Because it's not that complex, and for each one there's basically a function you call and you pass in the path you want to do. So this video we're not going to go through and create it as we go just because there's a fair bit here that's just like drawing the UI and getting things to work properly. Now this project is available to download from my GitHub completely free. Take it, dissect it, do whatever you want with it, use it in your games, modify it, it's all up to you. But I'm going to go through and explain kind of how I did all this and what each value means so that in your game you understand it and then you can use it as you need. So I have the project that we were on. I just went in and made invisible everything about the city so that we don't have it in here. I enlarged the room a bit. I left the path layer in there. It doesn't matter because we're not using it. And then in the NPC, we got the same kind of stuff we did before. But now I've added a few variables that we can change. So we have path closed, precision, smooth, end action, and whether it's absolute. Each one of these corresponds to a control about the path you have in code and in the UI. So if we open up that just a path again, you can see that we've got the connection kind, the precision, whether it's closed, absolute or relative is something you decide when you call the path. And we can alter all those through our code as well. And then the end action is something you call when you call that path. So. To create a path dynamically, you need to just make a path with path add. It doesn't take any parameters and you just assign it to a variable. If you're doing path finding, this is basically all you need to do because then the path finding will create the path for you. And we're going to get to that eventually, but right now we're just going to say we're creating a path and we're assigning it here. And then this is the path we're going to be working with for the rest of this you know, the path. So you can change this if you want. You can create a different path, like when we actually stop, when we reach the end, I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but essentially when we reach the end, we delete this path, but we just reassign a new one to this variable. So you can continue using the same variable over and over. The way that I am keeping track of where the paths are actually at is this array, this 2D array called path points. So when we left click, I add a point using the function path add point at mouse x and mouse y and with a speed of 100. Now remember that your path has a speed that you can set for each point along the path, which is something we didn't really look at last time, but this is really cool. If you want your path to have different speeds inside of it, you can set the point you add to have a different value of speed. Now I didn't cover that here because that's getting a little too much into it, but this is something pretty cool. 100 is the default value, which means that when we left press, now when we right press, we're actually gonna start the path and I'm giving it a speed of one. 
Now this is the actual speed it's going to move at one pixel per frame, but when we add a point, we're saying 100 means the default value that you've set. If we set this to 10, it's going to move at a tenth of the speed when it hits this point, but then if we set it at 1,000, it's going to move 10 times faster. So this is something that you can control and how fast your player, NPC, or whatever actually moves along the path. So when we left press, we add a new point to our 2D array using mouse X and mouse Y, and then I set the next points to undefined so that we're ready to start using them. And then back here we have the path and action. Now this is one of the two that does not have a function for setting it, like path closed, kind, and precision. The other one is whether it's absolute or relative. And where you set that at is when you actually start the path, you say the end action you want, and whether it's absolute or relative. And we've got variables for each one of those. So what I'm doing is when we're setting these in the step event, if you press one, I'm setting this, the path set closed to the new value of path set closed. I'm just toggling this Boolean value. I'm not doing anything with the path absolute. I'm not setting it here besides in this variable because when we actually set it, it is right here. So I'm just changing whether we are uh, displaying it as absolute or relative. So I'm drawing all of this in the draw GUI right here just to help you visualize it and see it. That's what this is for. But in the actual step event is where we can change them. So if we want to change the, the path end action, we do that right here by just changing which one we've got. And then we can increase or decrease the precision and we can do all of those with these functions as well. So this is all the different things inside of a path that you can control, whether it is a dynamic path like this or a path you've created in the editor. You can call all of these on paths that you already have running or created in your game, such as in your room or in the path editor itself. These are not exclusive to dynamically created paths. And then to actually see the path, I created an entire system that I realized is unnecessary because they actually have a debug function called draw path. You pass in the path, where it starts, and whether it's absolute or relative. Now, if you're drawing the path and you pass in a false for the relative, this path is then going to move all the time. So if I click here, it's now going to move based on my mouse X and Y, so it looks really weird. So I would keep this one as true, and then you can just change whether the path is relative or absolute with whatever variable you've got inside of here. And that's the project broken down. Again, you can download this completely for free and check it out, all of the different things inside of here. I think it's pretty cool, all the different ones that you can have here. You can see exactly how it works and change each thing and there you go. That's dynamic paths with customizable options for creating inside of your game. The only thing I didn't really talk about was when we hit the end of the path, which you can tell with path position. Path position just tells you where along the path you're at. It's from 0 to 100% using 0 to 1. And I'm just checking if I'm at path position 1, which means I'm all the way at the end. Then I delete it and I reset everything back to the beginning. So there's a bunch of other built-in variables, but I'm not going to cover those right here. Instead, I'm going to call it good and say, this is a project. Check it out, download it, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you learned anything, hit the like button. I appreciate it, and it helps the video out a ton. And as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.